Hi everyone, this is Dr. Poe, and I just wanted to talk to you for a few minutes about how to actually study for chemistry so that you can understand it, because the goal of studying is so that you understand it. Once that knowledge is yours, it is yours forever. So we don't really want to memorize it, we don't want to cram, you cannot learn chemistry in one day. So that's our first recommendation, is study over several different days. So you need a regular study plan. And small chunks of time are extremely helpful for that. So maybe like one hour at a time or, you know, even like, you know, 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at your lunch break, 30 minutes in the in the evening and, or an hour in the evening. And that's two, two hours a day. That's pretty easy to do. Um, anything that you can put onto flashcards, put onto flashcards and review those several times a day. And before you know it, you'll actually have it memorized because the more you use the information, the more that you'll actually understand it and be able to apply it. You also, when you're doing practice problems, so practice problems are really particularly great for math, but what you really want to do is explain why the answer is correct or incorrect. That's called the rationales. So you really want to focus on those rationales um, because the chances of you seeing that exact question with those exact words, again, slim to none. But if you can, exp if you get like the general gist and you know a lot of the synonyms for it, um, synonyms, oh, if I can spell, um, then you're going to perform better on your exams. And when you're in conversation with someone, you're, they're going to be able to understand what you're saying. You'll be able to understand what they're saying. And that's really the goal of your learning is that you're going to be able to go out into the real world, see applications of this and have something to say, not just know when to laugh at the, at the jokes. Um, you also, for the math based problems, you have to identify what steps to take. steps to take. <laughs> so you want to know what steps to take. I did it again. What's my problem? Steps to take for math. So you'll see the pattern in what was given. Like, was I given mass? Was I given a uh, molar mass? Was I given a formula? And what is asked? Or what is wanted? Like, what don't I know? What is this problem actually asking for? And then um, what tools you have in your toolkit? And then the more you, even if you practice the exact same problem over and over and over again, this part will eventually become easier and will eventually become clear. So you can do the same problem. And so anytime you were assigned homework, uh, you can still get value by redoing that homework over and over and over again, especially because you have it graded. That's a whole bunch of practice problems that you have the answers to now and that you have feedback on how you performed. So a lot of times that homework problem, that's going to be something similar to what's on the exam. So do the same problem over and over. Give yourself plenty of time over several different days. Um, with your study plan so that you can do that over and over and over. And that's really how you do well on practice problems. So we're going to explain why. We're going to be aware of any synonyms or any other related concepts. And we're going to think about for any math-based problem, what steps do I take? Like what was given? What is wanted? Because the way that you're going to perform well on your exam is you're familiar with the format. You practice those style of problems. You understand the concepts and all of those related concepts and all of the vocab words. So it, does it take time? Yes. And you know this. So schedule time, regular time intervals to study, uh, whatever works for you, whatever works for your schedule. Another really, really important thing is if you have to choose between sleep and studying, choose sleep. A relaxed, rested brain can actually learn. If you are stressed out, if there's something going on in your life, if you're, if you're hungry, if you're tired, your body cannot learn. Your brain will not learn. So in those situations, 
Just remember that your study, you have a study plan over several different days. It's okay to take a day off because you've already put in some work some other places. It's not like it's, it's all or nothing. So make sure that you are taking care of your basic needs first and then you'll have a rested brain. So I'm going to give you an example. If you have, like, if you did four hours of studying while you're exhausted, the next morning you wake up and you don't remember anything. You remember nothing because you were exhausted. And as you have to put in another four hours in the morning, you have to go back and redo all that time. But if you took a two hour nap, And, and then did two hours studying. The next morning, all you'd have to do is two hours of studying. It's a lot more efficient use of your time. So in our first example, we spent eight hours studying. In our se or eight hours of studying, repeating all of the work that we had done, and we got to the exact same spot. In our second example, two hour nap, two hours of studying, and two more hours of studying, that was six total hours instead of eight total hours, and we got the same amount done. So really break it up, plan your time well to study over several different days, and it, it's gonna be okay. Trust yourself. When you've put in the work, when you've put in the practice problems, the next most important thing is to, to practice, is to um, trust yourself. So don't give up. You can absolutely do this. Other students do this all the time. And the, their secret to success is just having a really strong study plan, going back over those practice problems, reaching out to your instructor. You can do this. I guarantee it. Thank you for your time. I hope that this has been helpful.